so we're thinking about when we're, we're setting up our garden is we're looking at water, since water is uh, crucial for vegetables and flowers to grow well. And uh, somebody said that you don't need irrigation too much in Fall River. And it, when uh, we, we were getting together, I, I don't know what that was referencing because I'm not so familiar. But the first thing I did notice is if you look up at that church, not being here in a rainstorm, but I assume that, that there's actually some water that's coming off of our roof space in this corner, and that might be a good location for a sighting of some sort of rain barrel or water collection system as a way to not have to actually pipe it in through a hose, that kind of thing. So we're thinking a little bit about water, and then um, we also want to think about what are the things that might be part of the garden. Now, it could be that a shed might be useful for tools. So for a community garden, that often is a shed that can be locked. Maybe there's a space inside where tools can be kept. But so maybe a, a siting of a shed somewhere along the building. And then also the development of compost piles, which will be useful for uh, building your own fertility. And the compost piles can be sited wherever you want in the garden. But what I was mentioning earlier is that you normally have a series, one, two, three compost piles. And each compost pile, as it's getting worked, once one is finished, you can be adding to the second and then starting the third so that they have slightly different stages so that when you're ready to actually take that compost and put it in your garden, you don't have to take, take it out of the stuff that you just put your kitchen scraps in the night before. So if you can have a kind of a, a stage of, of three different compost piles, that'll give you a finished compost and a brand new compost. So that might be stuff that you're looking at in terms of site layout. Uh, the other thing is to be aware of anytime you're working close to buildings is to think about toxic toxic metals, maybe lead paint off of houses and that sort of thing. So as we test our soils, we're going to test and UMass will give you results with lead and cadmium and you're going to look at those, but you also might want to take that into consideration. Um, we might want to test two different zones. We could test everything, you know, within six feet of the building and then everything that's on the further slope side and see if there's any appreciable difference. And it could be that the, the soils real close to the building are actually higher in, in toxic metals and maybe we want to focus on the, 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 the vegetables on this side of the garden. Does that make sense? So, all right. So soil testing, 